So welcome back guys. I got a very exciting video for you today. We're gonna find out once and for all, who is the king of splitters? So it seems to be one of the most important things in a test like this is consistency. We've got to have consistent wood to get an accurate outcome, right? How much more consistent can we get than two rounds from the exact same tree? So let me fire up the chainsaw. We'll cut out four rounds here. We're going to try two splitting methods. We're going to try working around the corners, knocking the edges off, and then we'll do the traditional pie method. I think this is going to give us a pretty good answer on which one is the best, best splitter. Uh, I was thinking on the way down here, one of the funniest things, one of the funniest stories I ever heard I wanted to share with you guys while we're filing here, was uh, from some of you guys from the old days, the Wrangler Barn Channel will remember my old Hen neighbor, Henry. Henry was uh, in his uh, late 80s, early 90s, I forget. But he was a logger his whole life up on Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens up in that area. Worked as a mechanic as well. Uh, and he was one of the most brilliant guys I ever met. Smartest guys, mechanical genius, and he never learned to read. So uh, he was telling me a story. His wife, uh, Marion, uh, they used to, uh, she used to do a lot of canning. And so she was doing this water bath canning in her kitchen. And she was, uh, had this uh, big metal jack. You know the jack the game used to play where you drop the ball and you pick up the jacks? You know, they kind of look like a cow trap, those little metal things with balls on the end. Well, she had kind of a novelty one. It was a great big one, you know, several pounds. And she had that in her kitchen and she would use that to weight down the jars. Cause when you're water bath canning, you know, they want to lift up, you got to keep them down. So this jack had been sitting in this boiling hot water for a long time, you know, like half hour or so. And it was hot, you know, hundreds of degrees. Well, she, she had oven mitts or something. She would take it out and she set it on the counter. Right when she set it down the counter, uh, one of Henry's friends came by uh, to visit. And he came in and sat down at the counter. He's like, hey, Marion, how's it going? Where's Henry at? And uh, he looked at this great big jack and he reached over. He, granted, it had just come out of this boiling hot water. He reached over with his bare hands, picked it up, and sat it back down. I looked at Marion and said, don't take me long to look at something. <laughs> when Henry told me that story, I thought that that was... <laughs> That was the funniest thing that I ever did here. You know, he didn't holler or, or hoop or yell. I mean, that's the epitome of, of, that's a tough guy right there. Don't take me long to look at something. <laughs> I, thought that that, I thought that that was pretty funny here. All right, let's get this sharpened up and we'll make that last cut. And we'll get to the, get this, get this video uh, moving along. All right. All right, let's bring up the first, first round. All right, let's talk about two radical different schools of thought right here. So first off, this is, this is my go-to right here. This is the Prandy. I don't know what it's called. I call it the Bismarck because it looks to, it, it reminds me of everything in German. Big, strong, overbuilt, <laughs> powerful, lasts a long lifetime, 
uh, it, this is my go-to when all else fails. And when I really get something that's gnarled and, and big, that this is my biggest, heaviest sledge. And there's a lot of really cool features of this. You know, you take it for granted. You, most people just look at this and think, oh yeah, sledge is a sledge is a sledge. But it's not. Um, there's so much evolution that's went into this perfect example. This is rare to see this on an edge. This here, that's for hooking. That's having two tools in one. You noticed earlier maybe that I was using this to move those rounds around. You can use the tool to bite into there because of that little beak that sticks down and move things around. Very rare. You don't see that on big box stores. You don't see that hardly anymore. Uh, that, that's really a nice attention to detail. A long taper. Look at that beautiful taper in this thing. It's got a long taper so you don't have a great big bulbous and on it that when you strike into something wet wood that you've had malls that just bounce out very frustrating you don't get so much of that here because it's just the superior design and shape now this over here the the uh, chopper one this is a very different school of thought here this is more of, of, a, of a of a splitting axe rather than a splitting maul what's the difference well the handle for one you can see it's got a traditional style handle there we'll cover that here in a minute but a little bit faster swinging speed a little bit different concept. Of course, this, the Chopper 1 has this mechanical advantage. Then that's what we're, we're here to find out today. Is this going to be superior to uh, traditional heavy maul? As he sort of wing slip out there, is it going to blow this wood away? Is it going to knock it out? So that's what, we'll find out, find, that's what we're going to find out today. Let's cover the handles real quickly, and then we'll get into the test. So not only do the heads share a completely different school of thought when it comes to splitting wood, so the handles. You want to see two perfect examples of how handles should be done? Right here. Oh, so, so much of this. I could go on and on about this all day. Again, to the casual observer, you're just going to think it's a handle, a handle, a handle, right? No, man. This Prandy, I, I wish Prandy axes were available uh, in the States uh, instead of just in Europe because, man, they are, the more that I use them, you know, they have become, next to Grand Force Brooks, my go to axes, the ones that I keep. I, axes come through my hands all the time. Uh, the ones that I really want to give away are these. Uh, I just love them. There's so much good to say about them. The handles alone would be a video. Look at this strong, heavy handle right here. But it, what it does is it gives you that strength up here where you have a tendency to overstrike. We've all done that. You'll look at malls and they're beat up right there. It gives you some longevity there. It gives you a few, a few, uh, mis you can make a few mistakes on it, not break your handle. And then it tapers down here to where your hands are going to be working into a nice, comfortable, more manageable size. This is too fat, this is just right. But they don't stop there. And here's where the rubber meets the road. What you don't see is it actually has a little palm swell on it. That, that really helps with fatigue. And it's, um, it's not typically done because it costs more money. You have to start with a much bigger piece of wood to end up with that. And then they, I mean, it, there's so much to this handle, I can't even tell you. From the way it's hung to the eye, it's really, really well done. Um, but it's a straight handle, so, and that's what you usually get from a mall. Now this here is a splitting axe. Now these are more popular, uh, they were certainly more popular out west, especially the, there's guys that used to split wood all the time. Even I think when my dad was in high school, there were some guys down at the paper mill, uh, young guys would work down there, and that's what they did all day, is they split firewood for the wood boilers. And he said they looked like, looked like uh, Mr. Olympian bodybuilder, you know, the shoulders in the back. You imagine having a job where you split wood all the time? But they preferred a splitting axe. And that may have something to do with, it could be regional, as well as um, the type of wood that we split, which would have been Douglas fir at that, at that mill. But look at this. This is handle perfection right here. It has got a beautiful Fawn's foot with a little kick on it. It has a, a nice curve to it. It is so good. I've looked at it and, and felt it and studied it that I am going to use this as a template for future splitting axes. It's really that good. I mean, look at that. It's got a nice big swell at the end of it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there, comes down, fits the hand really well. Beautiful sweeping, sweeping arc. Really, um, just really works with the body. It's, I just, man, I, I'm ranting. I could go on and on about these hands. Let's, let's, let's get to the, the splitting. 